Hello everyone, this is Cinema 77, Horror and Call Film Lover. I'm back with another movie review. And uh, this time I wanted to talk about a movie that uh, I really remember from 1995 that I enjoyed watching. And it was a, it was a very well-made film. And uh, the movie is called Full Body Massage, which... <sighs> Like I have to tell you, you already know that from, you know, seeing the title of the video. Yeah, the movie is called Full Body Massage. It was made for Showtime and the movie starred uh, Mimi Rogers, um, the, you know, like the ex Mrs. Tom Cruise. That's one of the things she's known for. But Mimi Rogers is, you know, a very talented actress. She's been around for many, many years and just being married to Tom Cruise wasn't the only thing she was known for. Um, she's been in many movies. She's done a lot of television. Uh, she's done things I never would have thought she'd ever do. Like, you know, she did an episode of Ash vs. Evil Dead where she was Kelly's mom. It's like, I never thought I'd ever see it just, you know, never thought I'd ever see the day where I would see Mimi Rogers in Evil Dead. But anyway, though, uh, but anyway, the, the movie is kind of an erotic, well, it's not kind of, it is, it's an erotic drama and, um, you know, the best part is, is if you're interested in seeing this movie, the movie is uh, on, it's on YouTube and in its entirety. So you can watch it for free. And um, I think this movie is going to be kind of a, you know, it's been kind of a mixed bag. I think, you know, I think some people will like it. Some people not so much. The story, um, we have Nina, who Mimi Rogers plays here. And Nina is, we find out that um, she's a very well put together woman. Um, she's single, but she's a businesswoman. She owns two art galleries. She's wealthy. Um, but she's not a bad person, you know, and that's one of the things, you know, you find this out in this movie is that her character, while she does make mistakes and she is flawed in some ways, um, overall, she is a good person. And, um, you know, I've said this before, I think, you know, usually what makes the best erotic stories work is, uh, when your characters are likable and interesting and you want to see them, you know, succeed. And in this case, Nina here is, you know, she's, you know, a beautiful woman and, you know, she's got it all. She's worked really hard and, you know, yeah, you do want to see her succeed in life. And, and, uh, but she's a pleasant person. You know, you find that out right away. She's not a bad person. So anyway, so Nina, she's, you know, the opening credit star, you know, uh, basically showing her driving home in her, you know, sports car convertible. And, you know, like I said, you know, we realize she's living in this um, kind of really nice, it almost looks like a, almost looks like a giant barn or a giant shed that's been converted into a home. But uh, she, you know, she lives in this very fancy house and, you know, she gets home and she's talking to uh, her secretary, Dee Dee. And, you know, they're talking about like, uh, you know, you know, what's been going on, like the gardener's been there, things like that. And, you know, she's waiting to hear back from this lawyer. And, um, you know, she, uh, Nina asked, you know, did Doug make the appointment? Now we come to find out that uh, Doug is actually her, you know, masseuse. And he comes and, you know, he gives her a full body massage. But what we find out is that with Nina, it's actually kind of more of a, it's, it's kind of more of a, uh, a sexual thing with her. And we, we discover that as the movie progresses. And at first, you know, Dee Dee tells Nina that, you know, yeah, Doug, you know, should be here. He didn't call to cancel the appointment or anything like that. So, <clears throat> so Nina, she's getting ready. And one thing you're going to see, um, you know, not so you're going to see a lot of nude Mimi Rogers in this movie, which, uh, promise you, that's a good thing. Um, you know, I think for some some guys, you know, if you're into like, well, I was going to say, yeah, there is the character of Alice who's, you know, if you're into young, beautiful women and everything, um, yeah, you're going to like her. But if you like, you know, beautiful, mature women, then yeah, Mimi Rogers will definitely do you. So she's getting ready. And, you know, as we see here, like she's getting, you know, she's checking herself in the mirror. We see, you know, I think that's one of the appeals of this movie, though, too, is that, you know, you could see, look at how, you know, the character of Nina here is examining herself in the mirror. And, you know, you can see that, you know, she's not a supermodel. She's not a supermodel. She's not, you know, one of these stick skinny, fake plastic Barbie doll type of women. She's, you know, a woman with, you're going to find out that, um, 
Mimi Rogers in this movie. You know, it's, you know, she's a very real looking woman. And by that, I mean, she has, uh, you know, very large breasts, which you're going to see. Um, she has, you know, you know, a, a nice, you know, she's not, you know, she doesn't have a tiny little flat ass or anything. You, as you can see, she's very well endowed. And, uh, but, you know, trust me, that is a good thing, you know, and it's nice to see her like that. <clears throat> you can see she's very healthy. She's very beautiful. And, um, you know, you could, you could say, yeah, maybe she's, you know, if you're into the MILF type or something like that, then okay. But anyway, so she's getting ready and, um, she's, you know, out in the jacuzzi, but here's the problem, you know, as she's fantasizing about Doug and we see that Doug is this young guy who's, you know, uh, you know, got like the six pack abs and the muscles and all this other kind of stuff. And like I said, he's a young guy. What is it? Who ends up showing up is Brian Brown. Now, Brian Brown is Australian actor. We've seen him in movies like FX, FX2 and so on. And he plays the character of Fitch and he comes and, uh, you know, he start, you know, at first, <clears throat> sorry, my throat is dry. Uh, at first, Nina is very, you know, kind of confused, you know, because Doug didn't call or anything. And, you know, Fitch is telling her that, yeah, Doug should have called you, but he asked me to come and fill in. He said that, you know, you and I would like each other and that, you know, it'd be an interesting experience. And so Nina, reluctantly, she does go along with it and they start getting into the whole thing of the massage. Now, one thing that is interesting about this is as the movie progresses, there are moments where you see um, title cards basically show up on the screen where they talk about um, elements of massage. Like at one point, to give you an example, like at one point, Fitch, he pulls out these um, cr these magnets and, you know, and he's going along the house and he's just kind of like looking. They're having a discussion about art. You know, she asks him because she owns two art galleries. She asks him, does he like art and things like that? And so he's going, he's looking at like the pictures on the walls and he's just kind of like clapping these magnets and, you know, and so he starts kind of explaining a little bit about, you know, the magnets and he's heating, he's warming them up and, you know, he has her, you know, get into one of these, what, what do they call them? Ergonomic chairs, I think. And, um, so he's, you know, massaging her and stuff and, you know, she's putting her feet on these magnets and things and they tell you, you know, like, this is what the magnets were for and this is what they were thought of and everything. And, um, you know, so as the movie progresses, you know, you, you, you get these little hints and details, but one thing that I think is kind of really interesting is the fact that when they first start with the, um, when they first start with the massage, Fitch seems like a very kind of like kind of confrontational in control character. He seems like he's going to really like lead the course in how this whole thing is going to go. And, um, you know, he's very aggressive and things like that, but I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just, you know, he's kind of like, okay, lay down. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this lay down over here. You know, I'm going to put the table over there and all this kind of stuff. And, um, like I said, it starts off interesting that way, but you know, and at first, you know, uh, Nina, she starts talking while he's doing the massage and he, and at first he's telling her, don't, um, you know, don't, uh, talk so much. It's your massage. You can do what you want, but you know, you need to learn to relax and learn to just enjoy it, you know? So anyway, so loud, like what I was saying is, uh, as the movie progresses, you know, uh, Fitch seems like he's really in control of the whole thing, but once Nina starts talking, she's able to kind of start breaking his exterior a little bit. And, you know, it's very interesting that the conversations that they have with each other. And one thing that's why earlier in the review, I said, I'm not sure that this movie is going to be for a lot of people because it is, there's a lot of talking in this movie and it's a very dialogue heavy film. And for some people that may not be interesting enough, but I think the, uh, you know, definitely the Mimi Rogers nudity definitely makes it interesting and you're going to see, you know, hopefully you like the idea of seeing a, a lot of close-ups of Mimi Rogers breasts and buttocks because there's a lot of that and you're going to see her legs and you're going to see, you know, uh, that's about the only, you know, just her, her vaginal area is pretty much about the only part that you don't see. But, um, there is a lot of, uh, Mimi Rogers teen a, and there's a lot of close-ups. So, 
you know, if you think you could be interested in that, you know, I think it could definitely carry you through the movie too. But uh, it definitely carried me. I was very enthralled, I must say. But, you know, as the movie progresses, though, uh, what is interesting, though, is like, in the beginning, Mimi, or, uh, Mimi uh, Nina, she explains, you know, that um, basically that, um, you know, massages are sensual, sexual. And that, you know, it's, you know, touching you, it's all the touching and there's a, there is a level of intimacy and things like that that are going on. And, um, you know, it's, yeah, you, you could kind of agree with that. If you've ever, depending on the kind of massages that you've been given. Now I've had massages by, you know, ex-girlfriends that were sensual, some were rough, things like that. Some were, you know, and I've given massages, I've, you know, I'm not a trained masseuse or anything like that, but I've, you know, it's like I've had, you know, girls that, you know, girlfriends and stuff, you know, I've given them a back rub. I've had women give me a back rub and, you know, there is a, it's definitely when it's done right, you know, it definitely has a calming effect, you know, it definitely, uh, you know, really lets you, you know, lets you let down your guard and things like that. But anyway, as the movie progresses, though, like what I was saying, um, the two of the, the two of them, they start letting their guard down and they start, you know, we find out that, um, you know, that Nina has had a succession of relationships. She's been married a couple of times. Um, <clears throat> she's been with men who, you know, at first she feels that, uh, at first she feels that these men don't want her to be herself and she feels like she's got to put on an act. But at one point, um, Fitch sees through that and sees that, you know, that she has a, tr that it's not so much the men, it's that she has the trouble being real with them. But what we also find out, though, too, is that uh, Fitch, you know, as much as he's breaking her resolve, she's breaking his as well. And it's like while they're talking about their relationships, we understand that uh, that uh, Fitch was in a relationship with this girl, Alice, and that the two of them were, you know, it was a very intimate and she was the one who taught him everything that he knows. She's the one who uh, showed him about how to do full body massages and and she trained him in, you know the beliefs of the, the Hopi Indians. <clears throat> and, um, he's, you know, he's relaying a lot of this information to, um, to Nina. And one of the things that I think is kind of interesting is the fact that these two, they do a bit of sparring with each other. Like, you know, they're, they're, um, <clears throat> like at one point they're sparring with each other about, you know, Fitch is kind of telling Nina that, um, you know, like, you have all this money and you buy all this stuff and you think this stuff is going to make you happy or it's going to make you sexy or it's going to make you this or that or whatever else. And Nina, but Nina is not going to sit there and let herself be talked down to. She fights back. You know, she tells him, you know, like, Hey, I have all this stuff because you know what? I wasn't given everything. We find out that Fitch is actually, um, sorry if I seem like I'm all over the place with this, but you're going to see the movie kind of is a little all over the place too, but but we find out that, you know, Fitch was a young man. Uh, he belonged to a very rich family and that, you know, his father was demanding his, at one point, uh, he talks, he tells a story about how his father made him, you know, told him to go take off this, this bow tie that he had on. And he thought that it was a clip on and said, you look like a bus boy. And but Fitch just pulls it and they find out that, you know, actually, no, he tied the tie and, you know, he did it right. But just his father thought it, you know, he did it so well that his father, father thought it was a fake. But, you know, we come to find out he come from this family. He had all this money. But Nina, you know, like I said, she's not going to sit here and let herself be talked down to. She's going to fire back and, and explain to him, look, you know, I wasn't like you. I wasn't given everything. You know, was, I had to bust my ass. I had to work for everything I got. And she's like, yeah, I buy things. You know, there are certain things I like and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, she's like, I'm not going to apologize for that. And he's all like, no, and it, but he does explain to her, you know, it's like you buy a lot of these things, you know, and because, you know, they have to you, they have memories or they have value, things like that. So they, they kind of spar with each other. <clears throat> and, um, um, you know, you know, and she's talking about her relationships and she's being open about it. Whereas like Fitch, he's kind of, you know, he's really kind of guarded still. He's, you know, he's taught telling little tidbits of his relationship with Alice, 
And then we come to find out that what ends up ultimately happening is that um, Alice, you know, at one point she, you know, he mentions like the two of them hit a point where he wasn't sure if he wanted to be in the relationship with her anymore because he felt there were no more surprises. And so, you know, she told him, go ahead and figure out what you want. And unfortunately, she dies in a car wreck and it, it really messed him up. And so that's one of the reasons you find out that's one of the reasons why he's kind of this, you know, confrontational person and things like that. But, you know, he's as the movie's going on, you know, and he's doing the rub down and he's telling her all this stuff. Like one thing that we find out is that he's able to coax out of her out of Nina that, you know, Nina wanted a sexual relationship with Doug that it, it didn't really get that far. You know, she mentioned that, you know, aside from touching her, you know, not much else has happened, but, you know, she kind of wanted it to go further. But, you know, uh, Fitch lets her know that it's not going to happen because we come to find out that Doug is gay, which, you know, she at first she lets on that, you know, she's she knew this and, you know, it was OK. And she already knew that he was gay and stuff like that. But, you know, he's able to see through that and see, no, you really wanted you were hoping that there was going to be this sexual relationship with Doug and she admits to it. But, <clears throat> and, um, and so, like I said, there's a lot of sparring, you know, going back and forth because Nina represents kind of more like a, um, she's more kind of like the modern kind of critical thinking person. Whereas Fitch is more of a, <clears throat> sorry, he's more of an old soul. He's more of a very spiritual kind of guy. And, and, uh, you know, and so the two of them, they kind of clash a little bit. But what I think ultimately ends up happening, well, I don't think this is what it ultimately ends up happening. What makes the movie really, really good is the fact that at no point do these two ever really hate each other. As a matter of fact, as the movie goes on, with the two of them communicating with each other, they're able to build um, a mutual like and a mutual respect for each other. And by the end of the movie, it's, you know, it doesn't flat out say that the two of them are going to get romantic with each other, but, you know, you're still going to, that's kind of the thing, you know, um, you get to know these characters and personally, I like both of these characters and I would like to see them end up together. Now at the end of the movie, it doesn't flat out tell you, oh, the two of them do end up together. But at the end of the film, you, you get the sense that the seeds are planted, that you know, the groundwork is being laid that the two of these, the, this man and this woman could ultimately end up in a relationship. And at the end of the movie, you know, she goes to pay him and <clears throat> he's, she's all like, well, I can't say it's the most relaxing massage I ever got. And he's like, but would you say it's the best? And she's kind of like, yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. And so she goes to pay him and, and she's, you know, she offers him more money and he's all like, no, not like that. And everything. And she's like, here, you know, he's all like, I'll tell you what, 75. She's like, okay. So she gives him a hundred dollars. She's like 75 with a $25 tip. And he's like, you do like to get your way, don't you? And, and, uh, she's all like, you know, as he's getting ready to leave, you know, she's all like, I would like for you to come back next week. And you know, he's all like, what about Doug? And she's like, we'll work something out. I'll explain it to him and everything else. But you know, if nothing else, you know, I'll have Doug come one day, you come the next, you know, but, uh, she's all like, and she's, she's kind of like, you know, I, I would hope, would you like to come back? And he's like, yes, I would. So I kind of like that. I like that. It ends, like I said, you know, it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't flat out say that the two of them are going to be together, but you could see, like I said, at the end of the movie, you see that the, the groundwork is being laid that these two are, you know, definitely could possibly end up in a relationship. But <clears throat> Overall, I think this movie is, it's a very well done film. The director is Nicholas Rogue, who, you know, he's a, you know, the late great Nicholas Rogue. He directed movies like Don't Know, Don't Look Now and other films. Uh, the Witches with Angelica Houston, he directed that. Uh, you know, it's a nicely photographed film. Of course, you know, before he was a director, he was a cinematographer. He made movies for, you know, he shot movies for Roger Corman, like Mask of the Red Death, you know, with Vincent Price and things like that. So, so yeah, so, I mean, he's got a good eye and the movie looks good, especially a lot of the angles on Mimi Rogers definitely look very good too. But, uh, but overall, yeah, I'd say, you know, it's definitely worth a look-see. Um, I think 
One thing I think is really nice is that, you know, Brown and Rogers, the two of them really do have a good chemistry with each other and it works well. The two of them bounce off of each other really well. And I would definitely say, yeah, I mean, give it a shot. It's on, it's on YouTube. You can watch it for free. Um, you know, that's about really all I can say about it. But just, uh, like I said, just be prepared because, uh, it is a very dialogue heavy film, but you know, like I said, you know, the, uh, the scenes of Mimi Rogers are definitely going to make up for that. But ultimately, I would definitely say, yeah. I mean, I wish this movie would get like a Blu-ray release. I wish somebody like Kino Lorber or somebody put it out. Um, this is a movie like, you know, I personally, if I'm building uh, an erotic film collection, I would definitely want this movie in my library. But that's just me. But um, the movie almost has kind of like a, a, the the feeling of a play. Like you're almost watching a play because most of it is in this one contained area and it's mostly like i said it's a lot of talk between this man and woman but there's a lot going on within that so so anyway so i'm about to run out of time so uh go ahead and check it out so if anybody watched this video i thank you for doing it i appreciate you for doing it i honestly hope you enjoyed this video if you did please like and subscribe um there'll be more videos posted and uh until then everybody take care and uh, i'll see you later bye bye